What's up guys? In this brute shoot, we're gonna talk a little bit about posterior chain development, specifically hamstring and glute development. It's a question that we get a lot of in regards to, coach, what kind of accessories should I be doing to either build my hamstring specifically or the way that I can recruit my posterior chain in a lot of my lifts? And the truth is in CrossFit, clearly we're training the posterior chain in the majority of movements that we execute. However, the greatest athletes are also the greatest compensators. So in order for you to get upright or in order for you to execute a squat for speed or for time, you may be compromising body positions and using the majority of the anterior side of your body in order to stand from a squat. So these exercises that I'm gonna list off and you guys are gonna get an opportunity to see some at work um, are some of the catalysts behind where you wanna go with some accessory work or some movements that you can add into your regime in order to target specifically the posterior chain. One that I'll kick it off with is a pretty foundational lift and it's the sumo deadlift. Um, in this lift, you're gonna widen your stance and you want your leverage upon the barbell to be very similar to how it is for a traditional deadlift with a closed stance. So when you widen your feet, don't necessarily drop your butt and get too squatty, right? Still keep the leverage of your sternum or your belly button out on top of the barbell. You wanna definitely look down and see that your shoulders are in front of the bar. From here, as you press the floor apart and drive your knees out, you'll feel a difference in the way that your hips contract at the top of the lift than you would even for a traditional deadlift. So add in sumo deadlifts. Another simple accessory is going to take place on the GHD. And the GHD is a great apparatus to use for GHD sit-ups, but it's often overlooked for what it was designed to be used for. The first exercise is going to be a lower hanging fruit. Almost anyone can do this, and it's a hip extension. And the hip extension, you wanna set up the pad so that the hip is free, and so that your back stays as flat as it would if you were gonna go for a heavy deadlift. So what that means is your erectors and your abdominals are essentially creating an isometric isometric contraction through this movement and your glutes and your hamstrings are what are going to pull you upright. So they are actively concentrically and eccentrically contracting as your torso lowers and rises. You'll see that you should come if you're flexible enough to about a 90 degree angle in the bottom and then come to a parallel position at the top. Again, this is the hip extension. You can do this unweighted for reps or you can add a little bit of weight, reduce the repetitions and build up some real strength back there. I really love to throw that in even sometimes in my warmups. It helps me feel as though my low back and my hips are warm in order to do whatever lifting I have for the day. Another consideration on the GHD is the glute ham raise. Now this is a more advanced movement, so a lot of you are gonna need to scale this, but essentially now we wanna put the pads so that in a kneeling position, our knee is as close to on top of those pads as possible, if you're strong enough. If you're beginner athlete at this, you want your knees to be up against the pads but towards the back. That does make it easier. Through the execution of the movement, you want to think about pressing your hips forward or squeezing your butt, and that's going to keep your hip open. That's going to make your hamstring and your, the upper portion of even your gastroc or your calf be pulling you up and you'll feel it for sure. Some of you may only be able to use eccentric reps to start where you slowly lower down for a count of four or five and then you use your hands or a spotter to help you rise to the top. If you guys don't have a GHD, you can also do this from the floor as long as you have a buddy that can hold your heels down. You can use the floor as a catalyst to help push yourself up with your hands and use yourself as a spotter. Another movement that is a lot like that or the mimics the same kind of movement pattern is a seated banded hamstring curl. Now when I do these in the gym, the goal is set up with a band that you can create a lot of speed with, right? And the goal is absolute speed in the contractions, in both the eccentric and the concentric. So what I want you guys to think about is setting the bench far enough away so that when your leg is straight, you feel tension on your heel within the band. When your leg's completely straight, you're gonna then fire your heel and pull it in by pulling your hamstring as close to that bench or your butt as possible, and then immediately you're gonna extend your knee again by firing through your quad. So don't resist the band here, gang. You wanna literally move as fast as possible. And what we're going to do is get as many fast contraction in as we can within that set, and I would try to shoot somewhere between 15 and 25 repetitions as we're more focused on contractile speed and muscle endurance. Um, clearly you want to you know, divvy up the reps each leg and do somewhere between two to three or three to four sets. I like to use this as a finisher uh, for the day uh, specifically. And then last but not least, we've got a few things with the barbell or the absence of the barbell where we're, our feet are rooted through the floor, but we're going to hinge at the hip. So the RDL is a common one or the Romanian deadlift where we're going to focus on a traditional deadlift stance, but we're going to try to keep our knees a little bit more locked out you should notice that this is gonna test your flexibility a bit more and put more of a stretch on your posterior, your hamstring specifically. And the goal is smooth 
uh, contraction throughout the eccentric and the concentric. Um, this is all about position, so don't get sloppy here. Don't find yourself in a position where you're rounding your back. Adding these in again in higher volume than you traditionally do your deadlifts. I'm a fan of, I like to use this if we're gonna do a foundational lift like the sumo deadlift or the traditional deadlift after those. Um, a lot of times you're gonna need to scale the loads back, but I would say it's safe to live somewhere between three to five sets and anywhere between 10 to 20 repetitions, depending on the goals and the desired goal of the lift. Last but not least, we got the good morning. And in turn, instead of setting yourself up so the bar is hanging from your hands, same movement pattern, still a hinge at the hip with a neutral spine, you're gonna put the bar across your back. This, I really try to target or tell or cue my athletes to send their hips back and reach their head forward, right? This helps keep your spine nice and long. It's really natural to think about just sinking back and then your back can tend around. We wanna soften the knees just enough so that we can get a great range of motion throughout and we really wanna test the flexibility of the hamstring. So think about reaching your end range and then standing up. Every time you stand up, squeeze the butt in the belly. And again, about the similar reps to the RDL. And then lastly, if you guys aren't comfortable with the good morning with a barbell, you can do the same exact thing with a band. You guys will see this in the video. The setup's a bit unique and you might need to find a comfortable position with it across your trap so that it stays put, but you can even speed up the repetitions with the band or add a ton of volume. So for any of you out there battling a back injury or something that's gonna pr prohibit you from being able to pick up a barbell or utilize it in your training, use the bands and do somewhere between 35 and 55 repetitions in a set for two to three sets you'll definitely feel the posterior pump with the good morning. So in turn, gang, there's a plethora of workouts or movements or accessory movements that you can be adding into your training. Think about doing the hard, heavy, intense stuff first and capping out your workouts with some of these or adding them in, even do a warm up in short volume though, right? Don't make it uh, too big a volume or pre-fatigue your body too much before you're getting the serious work done.